more or less have a short introduction about the West metal. So we can understand it from the two-dimensional graphene, actually. Uh, the graphene has a special band structure. It has a linear band crossing in two dimensional, and this, this linear band crossing is called as two dimensional Dirac point. Yeah, actually, this kind of band structure can also I exist can't. in three dimensional. So, <coughs> according to the symmetries, it can be classified in two groups. So, for the first case, uh, the system has both time reversal and inversion symmetry. So this crossing point is a four-fold degenerate point, and we call it as Dirac point. And for the second case, it breaks time reversal symmetry or inversion symmetry, or both. Then one, <coughs> then one Dirac point is separated into one pair of wire point. The wire point is a, a double degenerate point. The special thing for the wire point is that it present as the multiple of the very capture. It brings out a things, a source of the very capture. So can we can define the correlative of the wire point. The only way to consider out <coughs> to consider out the, the wire point is to make the two wire point to meet each other in the case space. So in this way you will open a gap and kill this wire point. So the robustness of the vessel metal is just the distance of one pair of wire point. And because of the large barrier capture, it has very special properties from both surface and bulk transport. From the surface point of view, <coughs> it's different from the topologic insulators. For the topologic insulators, we know that it has a surface delta core protected by the time reversal symmetry. But for the vessel metals, the surface state printed as nine closed Fermi arcs. The Fermi arcs starting from one wire point and then go to terminate it at the other wire point. And uh, from this wire point go to the upside surface. So this surface state is very different from the traditional topological insulators. And from the bulk properties, because it has joint wire capture, so if we protect the barrier capture into the spin space, it can also have a very large spin barrier capture. So uh, together with the symmetry, we can expect uh, strong anomalous power effect in magnetic system and uh, strong spin power effect in non-magnetic system. This is some of our uh, model calculations. So this is one pair of wire point. If we put uh, the a K plane <coughs> between this this uh, uh, wire point, this two pair of wire point, we can see that the normal conductance or no, or spin power conductance are caught has a caught as values, and the total value of the normal for conductivity or spin power conductivity is just the multiply of the caught as value and the distance of this one pair of wire point. So this is very interesting result. So then, how to realize it in the real materials? So according to the same trees, uh, the wire point is a double degenerated point. We need to break the spin splitting. Uh, so for this case, it can only exist uh, in time reversal. Uh, <coughs> we need to break the time reversal symmetry. It means uh, it can exist in magnetic materials or in the materials without uh, in washing symmetry. So at the beginning, people uh, give the concept of the vessel metals and formats in the magnetic component. And later it proposed many other magnetic vessel metals. But so far, none of this was really confirmed by the experiment. Later, people try to realize the, uh, the vessel metals in non-magnetic cell. System, but with the working symmetry breaking. So the most promising <coughs> compound are tantalium oxide class and MOT2. This is called the type 2 western metal, this is called the type, this is called the type 1 cell metal, this is called the type 2 western metal. Uh, uh, three different groups gave, gave almost the uh, same result for the confirmation of this class of western metals. One is from LP channel, one is from Princeton, 
and wines from the Oxford, you can see that the upper pricing are almost the same, but their understanding of the result are different. For the IOP, they understand the Fermi arc connected to the very point in this way, W1 to W2, <coughs> and the other for the W2 to W2. And from Princeton, the understanding that the where the Fermi arc just uh, connected to W2 point, and uh, from Oxford, they only confirm this one is the Fermi arc, and this one, the, uh, the second one, are not really confirmed. So three different groups have almost the same part of our past, but a different understanding of the result. To solve this problem, people, um, we have tried to um, use the stability of the surface from the Because the Fermi arc is protected by the uh, topology, it means it's robust uh, under the surface perturbations. So we try to um, put some <coughs> calcium dosing on the surface and try to cure the uh, trivial surface state. And in this way, only the, only the topological surface state can exist. In this case, in this case, the, from the surface changed a lot. And then you can see the evolution of the surface state. Here, it is a lot of the amount. And here, all the surface state uh, come from, all the surface state are coming from the, the, the Fermi arcs and it's consistent with the numbers of their point. So this result completely confirmed the, the uh, uh, completely confirmed the, the, the rest of metal in this class and compound and give a clear picture for the for the arcs. So in every, in, at this time, people never stopping in searching for the magnetic rest of metal. So far the most, uh, Missing compound is cobalt-tin uh, This is our result. So uh, this compound present a uh, <coughs> ferromagnetic, uh, and uh, the magnetization along the C direction. This is the crystal structure and the magnetic structure. Because it has a mirror symmetry, it band structure also present a node line band structure. Here is the band structure without the spin optic coupling. When the symmetric coupling is switched on, uh, this uh, node line is broken by opening a band gap. But at the same time, you can have one pair of point on the node line. So this is distribution of the node line band structure and the point band structure is from the top view. We first analyzed the, the transport property from our calculations and measurement. It, has very large normals for conductivity, and this normal conductivity is completely intrinsic. Even at the zero field, it, we can have a very large uh, work conductivity. And after we analyze the origin reason, it's just from the topological band structure, just the node line band structure and the very point. Furthermore, because uh, because the charge carrier density is very small, actually from the from surface, you can see that there are only very small bubbles all from the surface. And the charge carrier density is only uh, 10, 20 order. So because of that, it also has a very large enormous angle. Uh, so this is the first compound <coughs> to host both strong enormous for conductivity and enormous for angle. It's a very typical compound. So uh, if we try to replace the electric field, people also got strong enormous noise effect. Uh, similar, effort that is just similar to the noise per effect, but with the uh, um, but with the perturbation from from the temperature gradient. So so far we analyzed the transport property, and from this transport property we can have a very strong signature of the of the of the topological band structure and uh, the rest metal band structure. So, how about uh, the surface from the arc? For this type, we first try to analyze the uh, did a theory calculations for the surface state, and then we ask our collaborations to really measure the 
for this kind of bond, it's present as a quasi two dimensional uh, kind of bond. Uh, they are a weak uh, bonding. If we try, if we try to break this bonding, we get two different uh, terminations. One is the zero termination, and the other is the team termination. This is our calculated surface state. And uh, but because there are a lot of uh, surface surface data and uh, it uh, it's necessary to identify which one is the really from X and which one is the done bound. This can be understood as uh, the topology. <coughs> uh, for a simple model uh, from a global point of view, you can see that the effort of the Fermi arc in the Kx, Ky, and the energy space, it forms a three-dimensional ply actually. And we, if we go to a fixed energy, as we have the from two dimensional from surface, and this from surface just present as an enclosed from arc starting from one way point and go to its partner. And then if we fix, uh, uh, if we fix a uh, 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 k pass, means uh, we have some dispersion. If we see the dispersion along this one pair of a point. We can see that they actually the Fermi arc related state just the correct uh, this one pair of point. And uh, if we see it uh, perpendicular to this W1, W2 direction, we can have two different surface states. One is between, between these uh, uh, two pair point, we can have the we can, we can have the have the the surface state connecting the occupied and the non-occupied state. And after all these two pair points, they can have a fully gapped state. And because the framework state is connecting to the, to the occupied and occupied band, it is robust. It is different from this standard bond. This standard bond can be killed by some conditions, but this right one cannot. So we just directly analyze the, which one is the really framework, try to give this project along very long range in the uh, reciprocal space and we find that uh, along the key gamma point key key gamma point this one connected to the occupied and non-occupied state so this one is related to the formiac it means here is the really uh, formiac state related to the wire point uh, later our uh, experiment collaborations really confirm our result. This is our theory calculations, this is the APAS measurement, and this is the STM measurement and transfer it to the, for the particular variance. So all our predictions are really confirmed by the experiment measurement. Uh, later, we try to um, doping the sample, try, um, try to uh, two up so from level. Up to from level, we really uh, see the linear crossing point, and this is just related to the very point actually. This is uh, uh, a really directly observation of the three dimensional dark very point in the cobalt tissue zero. <coughs> so, this is my summary of my talk. Uh, so, we confirmed the, the Magnetic asymmetry in cobalt in the therefore, and from both the bulk transport and surface from the axe. And because of the topological band structure, the cobalt in the therefore hosts a new record for the three dimensional non for angle in the funded in, in the existing three dimensional kind of point. Uh, thanks to all my, all my collaborations with Claudia, Yulin makes the uh, APAS measurement, Kaimo uh, makes, uh, uh, makes the STL measurement, and Enke, uh, Nitesh, and Satya make the transport measurement, and Lucas and Chunan help me to make the calculations. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>